will the next generation digital service providers be different from the CSPs of today? And how do we ensure a successful transformation? At the close of the inaugural DSP Leaders Forum event, we invited five leading service providers to share their views. Uh, I really think it's about customer responsiveness um, and, and, you know, the, the on-demand at point of need um, is the future of what we're going to do for our customers. And I think those that execute well on that will, will rein in um, the riches, those that, that aren't able to adjust to that way of, of working. I think we'll, we'll find the future very challenging or we'll become the dumb pipe, which, you know, which is the, this kind of horrible utopian fear that, that, that we have about um, the future of telcos. It's going to be heavily driven by use cases um, that we know today and it's also going to be driven by use cases that uh, we don't know yet. Right? And it's going to be a, an intensely collaborative uh, play with all of the players um, and we're forging them together based on open standards and based on um, a collaborative effort to actually cover the user needs edge to edge. That's essentially how we see the future world. For me, the transformation towards digital will be that we will have, um, in fact, different splits. At the moment, we, are quite, we have quite big blocks. We have uh, marketing defining the services, the business models. We have IT, we have networks. And my feeling is that we will think um, our companies and our business with different angles and that will lead to different organizations. The target purpose will still be uh, to focus on the services that will be delivered to the customers, but the way we do it, we will we'll have different splits, different organizations, different processes, and this is what we collectively need to do. Well, I think there's a clear demand from the customer to change our DNA from Telco, because uh, for the time being, as a Telco, we have a fixed contract, fixed relationship with the customer, with less flexibility. And I think the customer the demand is gives them more flexibility, manage their own services by their own, and not make a long process to uh, sign a contact with the customer. I have an, as new, like to, order, like to order a new service, and then it needs time to implement it. I think these kinds of things it should be changed in the company. I think there's uh, two parts to this. There's the technology aspects, and there's the business aspect. From the technology perspective, I feel have being a digital service provider, the focus should be from the, in the application. The ability to launch application in the fast pace. When we talk about 5G, IoT, there's a real need of being able to efficiently deploy an application in a daily basis, actually, to support all the business cases and services we provide. And for that to happen, there's a real need of having these consistent platforms with, uh, with defined APIs and open interfaces to make that, uh, that possible for us. And I think from the business side, the whole question about how the relationship we have with our suppliers has to change, what kind of uh, procurement of technology we need to start adopting, changing the way we look at procurement, the, the skills that we need to adopt internally as well to support all those infrastructure that we will be, in my view, have to own and have more responsibility for. And this is, I think, how the dynamic of the business will change when we move to DSPs. But given the new technology advances, and what we're focusing on is to build key capabilities, right? Uh, the internal skills, um, the infrastructure, the security, for example, the partner ecosystem, in the way that we can very quickly organize these capabilities and deliver what is actually needed for our customers as a true enabler for their digital transformation. You've got to keep moving, because um, the minute you stand still, it's, it's, it's game over. So. I think we'll see more boldness from telcos. I think if we don't, we'll just become completely irrelevant. Um, and that's certainly the agenda I'm, I'm pushing at, at, at BT, is to be more bold. And certainly the message that our new CEO, Philip, has given us is, um, you know, what are, the, what are the 10 massive things that we'll do over the next five years that are go that's going to really make a difference to our colleagues, to our customers, um, and actually to, to, to the UK as a whole. We need to keep the vision and at the same, same time be realistic of what can really be achieved in the short terms, taking into account what we call legacy, which, which is just in fact the current business that provides the current revenue that uh, we are just to improve, not to shake and destroy. I, I guess it's, it's always going to be a bit of a combination, right? So um, you have to be very clear on what your vision is, the strategy to get there. I think it's big, bold moves. 
um, that are really going to drive the change that we need to make. Um, and, and, you know, you've got to think about that carefully. You've got to plan for it well. You've got to change the mindset from why to why not. I think this kind of change uh, is, should be driven by the board, for, for sure. That is definitely needed in, in order to, uh, to move forward in the right direction, to make the change from the classical telco organization to a, a new organization called the ESP organization. I think that is, that is something what we are doing in Deutsche Telekom. We have a clear target, maybe call it vision. Uh, we know what we should do, what we have to do in order to achieve that. And for, for sure, we have to make an update from time to time. We are on track or we make a fine tuning of the target. Investors want to see people go out there and grab a hold of the market uh, and win in the marketplace. Um, and I think we need to do much bigger and bolder things. We need to evolve the fantastic rollout that OpenReach are doing on FTTP and the 5G rollout and really go into customers with ways that we can improve their businesses that they've never even thought of and they never even knew that they needed, but holy shit, they can't do without it now. Mm. That's how we need to think. One risk I see is that um, basically each one of us claiming to be more clever than, than, than uh, its peers. And I know I, uh, we have teams inside Orange that believe so, that we are more clever. We <laughs> and each one saying, this, this is the bright architecture, this is the infrastructure we need. And, uh. But at the end, what we need, and as you said, what we need is industry-wide uh, consensus, at least on some uh, key elements. We need to limit the number of different profiles on, on, on several key uh, things. If we don't collaborate between us operators to create really that long-term vision and, and plan accordingly, we end up with the risk of having different communities, different open source uh, initiatives go into different direction because we don't have that consistent vision between mm -hmm. us. So I think it's a combination of having the uh, adaptable vision that we can we can adjust as we move along, but also collaborate with other operators to make sure our path to that vision is really clear and we can all plan ahead and, and account for it. We are competitors um, uh, not only in the different markets where we operate, we also are competitors when we are talking to investors. I think the one thing, I agree with that, I think the one thing I'd, I'd add though is um, we can get to consensus by huge compromise because then nobody really gets what they want. And, and I feel that if I look at 5G, there's many things in there that we got to, co you know, and we got to via compromise that now we're all thinking, hmm, was that really the right compromise to make? And I, I feel that um, standards has become too much about compromise and, and not much, not, not about. Um, actually trying to do something better than that might be a bit more risky. But we have to be realistic in what technologies can do, but sometimes we also have to be cognizant of the fact that the use case will sometimes follow the technology. You have to be able to deliver it first before someone actually identify how they can use it. As well as making things work together, I also want to champion great breakthroughs um, that we can all be proud of as an industry. And, you know, AT&T might make one tomorrow, Orange the day after, BT um, next week, you know, but, as, but I look at all of us together and the powerhouse of technology that we've got, you know, is easily as good as the fangs, yet we're not making the breakthroughs that they make. And to me, that doesn't feel right.